Hey everyone, it's Vault Box, and for today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I 3D printed, finished, and painted my Bo-Katan armor from The Mandalorian. I started working on this costume back whenever Bo-Katan showed up in The Mandalorian. I think I even made a tutorial of making her headband out of EVA foam back then, because whenever she showed up, I basically dropped everything. Every project I was working on, I was like, this is what I'm going to be focusing on. And this Bo-Katan build, as well as my husband's Mandalorian build, kind of consumed my 2021 slash 2022. So let's get started by 3D printing all of these pieces of armor out. And I'm going to be starting with all of the blue pieces, which will include the shoulders, the gauntlets, the knees, and the shin pieces. I already have videos on the helmet and the jetpack, and they'll be linked here on the screen, as well as down in the description below if you would like to check those out after this video. The first thing that I did is I printed out all of my files, and all of these files are from Mystery Makers. I will, again, make sure to link them down below for you. I love these files. He actually recently upgraded them where they're a little bit thicker. I want to say the gauntlets especially got a upgrade, but I am using the original files from like a year or so ago. They are actually scaled to Katie Sackoff's measurements. She is five foot six and I happen to be five foot six. So that's why I'm not really going to be talking about scaling armor too much in this video because I didn't have to do it. But if you do need to know how to do that, I have a couple videos on scaling, which I'll link down below as well. And here are the settings that I used on the screen. But again, remember that settings really don't mean anything in 3D printing unless your 3D printers are dialed in and everything is working well. And once all of the files are oriented to my liking and all the supports are in the right places, I then ship it off to my printers and let them do the hard work for me because I'm a dirty cheater that 3D prints all my armor. <laughs> Once everything is finished printing, I get everything off the bed and I remove all of the supports and I begin prepping to smooth down these layer lines. Now these were all originally test prints, hence like the messiness that's going on here. There's a lot of little zits and blobs, but I'm going to be sanding everything down so it really didn't matter to me. On this specific armor, I used UV resin to smooth all of the layer lines down. However, due to a couple of factors like mainly messiness and the fact that it can be pretty dangerous to work with if you don't have the proper PPE equipment, I have been using this new method that I will link in this tutorial here that you can check out if you're looking for a way to smooth your 3D prints. Now once everything is smooth, it is time to get some paint on these pieces. Everything got a black base with some Montana Gold Shock Black. I'm applying a layer of black first because this will help the silver layer that we'll add on top of it to really pop whenever we get to that step. And remember, throughout this video, I'm going to be showing you the colors that I used, but if you have a black spray paint and it's not Montana Gold, like you can totally use that as well. I would just recommend maybe doing some sort of a paint test to make sure that your spray paints and your airbrush paints don't react with each other because that is one thing that can happen like you could have an enamel based spray paint and then put some other type of spray paint on top of it and they could react in a weird way to be honest I am not the expert on any of that kind of stuff I would research that but that is another reason that I use all of the same brand of spray paint because typically when you stay within the same brand family you won't have as many issues funny enough after I went through that whole spiel of using Montana gold paints on this I am going to break out my airbrush and we're going to apply some spaz stick mirror chrome after we've let that black sit for about an hour to cure. On this Bo-Katan costume, I used two different types of silver. And the reason I was using two was because I had some leftover from other projects and I was trying to use them up. So you'll see me using a mixture of spaz stick mirror chrome in my airbrush and Montana gold silver chrome spray paint. The important thing to note if you're going to use the spaz stick mirror chrome in your airbrush is that this specific type of paint requires a specific type of cleaner. I have bricked an airbrush airbrush before because I did not clean out my airbrush with the appropriate cleaner. So make sure if you're going to be using the spastic mirror chrome that you also pick up a can of the airbrush cleaner for whenever you use this paint. Once my layer of silver is dry on all of my armor pieces, I'm now going to go in with some of this latex masking medium from Vallejo. This product is really fun for creating like controlled weathering in your pieces. So whenever you put the latex down on your piece, whatever color is underneath that latex is what is going to show through whenever you remove the masking layer. So it's kind of similar to using like painter's tape for masking, except this looks a little bit more natural. I like to apply it with a Q-tip. I have seen some people use silicone brushes to apply it as well. Just don't use a regular bristle brush because you're just going to, you're just going to gunk it up and it's going to be, you're going to have to throw it away. I keep trying to swipe my notebook like it's a phone. What is wrong with me? Once the latex is cured, it takes like maybe 10 to 15 minutes to dry. I then gave all of the pieces of armor a coat of Montana gold sky blue. And it looks pretty bright whenever you first apply it, but don't worry with all the weathering work 
work that we're going to be doing, it will get toned down. I then let the sky blue coat dry for another hour. And once that was all cured, I took some like metal tools, sometimes even my finger to scratch all of that latex off and reveal that really cool chipping effect with the silver underneath. It was then time to apply some of the other little greebly bits onto the gauntlets like this rocket launcher here. I just used some super glue. You may also notice that I didn't include a lot of the little details on one of the other gauntlets because I tend to break things and I would rather just not have them there than risk like putting all this work into, you know, putting them on there and then it just break later. That's just what I do sometimes. I just omit details and it is totally fine if you want to do that too. Before I get to weathering all these pieces, I did want to go back to the shoulder pieces specifically because they do have a slightly different order of operations to getting all the paint on. So with the shoulders, I started off with a coat of Montana Gold Shock Black, then did a coat of the Silver Chrome on top of that. I then applied the latex everywhere that I wanted chipping at, and then I sprayed a little white area on the middle of each of those shoulders where that Night Owl logo is going to go. I then take some painter's tape and masked off that white. I, I think I let that white dry for about an hour as well, so that once you're done and everything is dried, you're left with this like white circle in the middle of your blue shoulder piece. I then applied these Night Owl decals that I got from Van Oak's Props Etsy store. He also has a YouTube channel, which is really cool. You should go check it out. He's a really great guy. And once those decals were on, I then had to go back in with a brush and paint in that sky blue around the edges because for some reason at the time, I thought that there was a white outline around the Night Owl logo and there is not. So I had to correct that. And once all of that was dried, I then went in and removed all of the latex chipping that I had to reveal that silver underneath. And let's return to getting everything all grimy and weathered up. As for the first pass of weathering, I used my airbrush with a mix of black and dark blue in the cup, basically outlined all of the pieces. So for my second pass of weathering, I then took a mixture of these four Vallejo airbrush colors, put them into the cup and mix those all together and just did a light passing all over those pieces as well to kind of give it a little bit more grimy of a look. I also ended up doing an oil wash later on in the process with all of these things, but you could just stop here. This is totally grimy enough for me. I definitely made mine a lot more grimy than the show, but I just, I just love weathering and like, it's just so much fun. Once all that weathering is complete, I then take some matte clear coat and spray that all over the armor. And fun fact, I actually only did this a year after, you know, making this armor because I just completely forgot it escaped my mind. But you, the person making this right now, you can do this right now and do it after your weathering step. Now the armor pieces are basically ready for wear, except there's no way for us to wear them. So to do that, I'm going to take some pieces of Velcro and E6000 glue and glue those to the backs of my pieces. Now you're probably wondering, why am I doing this after I did all of this paint work? Because I forgot to do it at the beginning, okay? I would recommend putting the Velcro on at the beginning phase of working on this before you put any paint on there to avoid risking chipping your paint job with the clamps on there. Learn from my mistakes. The silver bits are next and thankfully the paint process is like a lot simpler on these. So let's go ahead and print out the chest and ab pieces, the hand armor bits, the two hip pieces, and both of the hand armor pieces. Did I already say hand armor pieces? I can't remember. <laughs> after all of the layer lines are smoothed down, everything got a base of Montana Gold Shock Black. And after that, I applied a coat of spastic mirror chrome from my airbrush. And this is where I said in the beginning of the video, like I used two different colors of silver. I had some of this left over from another project, so I decided to kind of use it up. Once that silver layer was dried, I then went in with my latex masking medium and masked off all of the areas that I wanted that chipping effect to be. And there's a lot of it on the chest plate, especially because I just, I just wanted it to look really intense. And you'll see why here in a couple of steps. Once that latex medium is dry, I then take some of this Rust-Oleum oil rub bronze. A better color to go for would be the flat iron variant that they had, but I literally could not find it at the time of making this costume. But I take that Rust-Oleum spray paint and I lightly misted that all over the silver pieces. This really should be more of a dusting than a solid layer of paint. You can always go in with more layers of this if you're not satisfied with it whenever a layer dries. And I'm pretty sure that I did about three layers to get this look. And this kind of creates a, it's like a weathered look, but slightly, I don't know. It just, it creates a very unique look on the piece, especially once you start to take the latex off. I did decide to go in and outline very, very faintly with some black airbrush paint. This helps to bring out the details of the armor a little bit more and you could totally get a similar effect to this with a black acrylic wash if you don't have an airbrush. I then applied a matte clear coat to these as well and then went back in and applied some Velcro to the backs of all of them with some E6000 glue. As for getting all of this armor onto my body, well, that's a story for another video. And that's coming up in the next tutorial where I review the flight suit I bought, how I attached the Velcro to the flight suit, as well as show you the two ways that I made the belt and holster set, as well as putting the wig and the headband on, and finally just showing you all how I suit up and get in 
into my costume. Hope this video helped you out if you're thinking about building a Bogotan costume or even just like a Mandalorian costume in general. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting me. As always, through all of this crazy cosplay stuff that I do, your support means the world to me. If you guys would like to join, you can head over to patreon.com slash vaultbox. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. Bye!